You can start by bowing down and taking down. <coughs> Buddhist Mataji. Today, 12th of June, we the Sajjay East from Melbourne, Australia, would like to ask your permission to meditate the divine of the seed, to surrender your divine will, and to reach the height of spirituality that you asked us, requested us to reach. Shimataji, please allow us to be your pure instruments, your channels. Please allow all the Sahajayadis of the world to spread Sahajayoga, to establish Sahajayoga, establish peace, spirituality, and understanding all over the world, today and every day. We can keep our left hand towards Shimatuji and right hand on the ground. We can take the mantra of Shri Ganesh once. Oh, Shmataji, please balance our emotional side. Please give us the power of pure desire and the power of pure joy. Can take the mantra of Shri Mahatma's section. Shri Mahatma. 
Now we can do the right hand of Shmataji, left hand on the ground. And we can take together the mantra of Shri Kartikeya. Left hand halfway up towards the sky element, right hand towards Mataji. Mantra of Shri Mahasaraswati Saksha Shri Hanuman. Oh. <laughs> Both hands on the left, those Shmantaji, and we can say the mantra of Shri Mahalakshmi Sakshat Shri Ganesh. <laughs>
can take the mantra of Shri Nirvichara. We'll watch together Mataji's uh, talk 1994, Abhishek Puja in Kabbalah. Today, we all have decided to have the puja of Adisha. There's a difference between doing the puja of Kundalini Shakti or Adi Kundalini and Adi Shakti. The difference is like this. On one side, the Kundalini <coughs> is reflected in you by Adi Kundali. The second side is the power of Adi Shakti, which is Param Chaitanya. So in totality, if you see, it has two sides. One is her power as Param Chaitanya and also reflection in human beings as Kundali. The third work that Adi Shakti had to do was to create this whole universe. To begin with, as you have seen yesterday also, <coughs> how the cosmos was created and then how 
this special planet of Mother Earth was created. Now what I, I have told you about Adam and Eve, we have found out, said by also John in his Gnostics book, it's very surprising. They always told you that Christ must have told you many things but they are not in the Bible. So <coughs> if you understand that this Adi Shakti came as a serpent, the Adi Kundalini part of her, and told the Adam and Eve, especially Eve, that she should ask for <coughs> the fruit of knowledge to be eaten. And the reason I gave you is exactly written there, that the mother power, the feminine power, didn't want her children to live like animals without understanding what is the knowledge of the higher realms, not giving them chance to rise higher through their freedom and then to higher and higher awareness. It was the concern of the mother. So there were two types of worlds were created, one was the divine, another one started evolving. <coughs> To look at it looks very tremendous stars, thousands and thousands, billions and billions of years have passed for this kind of a work to be done. But if you see in modern age, we are going to the moon at such a small, with such a small effort and also with, with such as uh, little time you reach there, nobody could think that we'll ever be there. All this is happened through the human brain. Now what is the human brain after all? Human brain is not at all anywhere near the brain of the Virat, nor is it is, uh, used fully, it's not used fully. It's very little bit is used by human beings, by which they have achieved this kind of a flight to moon. <coughs> of course there was no purpose in it, I don't know why they are doing it, but they did it. Can you put it on? <coughs> so the whole nature was created by her. Whatever you see today around yourself is all created by her, is all her work that is there. You'll be amazed, just now I said I was going to wear a very heavy sari and uh, I said it's very hot so I better change to a simpler sari, so I changed. And when I came out I found it has become cooler. <laughs> so the nature knows everything and who informs the nature is this Paramachaitanya. Paramachaitanya was never that active which is started since my birth, I should say, when Krutha Yuga started. At this time <coughs> you had to have your Realization, that was decided by the Divine Collectivity, you can call it. All the gods, goddesses, all of them decided to put this work on somebody who thought, whom they thought to be very capable. So they said, we all will be with you, entirely with you, all our powers will be with you, but you take up this job. Now, in this Kali Yuga, to transform human beings. In a way, human beings are more difficult than animals because they have their own freedom and they have been given this freedom to achieve their final freedom. In their freedom, the way they behave is something very surprising, how 
they go completely out of control and <coughs> try to do things which are so destructive. Of course, in Kali Yuga it was predicted in India, but I think they could not predict what would happen in America or what would happen in the Western countries where people have freedom just to destroy themselves. And they are finding new methods of destroying themselves. This tendency cannot be curbed, cannot be stopped by Adi Shakti or by God Almighty because you have been given the freedom to ruin yourself, spoil yourself and to go to hell. That cannot be controlled by any divine power. Divine power also respects your freedom. So the divine collectivity thought, are we going to completely ruin the creation of Adi Shakti? Are we going to completely destroy whatever she has created and then recreate something better? This was the discussion going on. And most of them were so fed up with the human beings, especially with the Western freedom, that they said, these people want hell and why should we give them the heavens? Yes, not proper. So, first thing Adi Shakti did was to create a seeking in them. She created this desire to seek. And so these people belonging to this culture, which was so destructive, started seeking. And when the seeking started, also, as usual, in the market there were many others who came forward to give answers to their seekings. They had to go to various cults and things and false people and all that because they had no way to know. But if they had read some books of enlightened people like Kabir, like Nanak, even Gnostics, their scriptures, anything like that, they would have understood what is the truth and where to find it and how to find it. It is a big struggle, I find, between the people who are seekers and those who are not at all seekers. They don't want to know and they can never be seekers. I can assure you that some of them will never think of seeking. They'll get possessed, they'll have diseases, they'll have earthquakes, they'll have anything, they will never seek. Even if they get diseases, they'll say, oh, we are martyrs, we are doing great work. Such stupidity has come into their heads that they think by doing these wrong things we are going to be saved. And this stupidity comes through the perverted brains. And this perverted brain acts when people are free to use. I just don't know, why don't they see around and see for themselves what is happening? So to expect that the whole world will go to heaven is absolutely not possible. It's not possible, it cannot. They have tried all kinds of things. I've seen people, uh, drugs and alcohol, this, that. There is one fellow who got his PhD on writing the how he reached spirituality through drinking and they gave him PhD for that. So even at the helm of affairs, in the universities, I don't know how such stupid people came up from where, out of which creation. It's impossible to understand. How could they think that this kind of destruction will lead them to their salvation? They see it every day. They watch it every day, they know it is happening, but still they cannot receive. But those who are seekers are so ardently seeking 
that they will all have to given their Self-realization. Now this is, of course, my job, I agree. I have come on this earth for that job. I am supposed to do it. I am trying my level best. I know incarnation has lived like I have lived for so many years and such co compassion of mine which really makes me live, that I feel we have to have many more such yogis, we have to have big salvation. With that compassion and with that love, one can take to any measures, anything, I do not think those who are not seekers will achieve it. Now why is it some are seekers and some are not? One may say that. Adi Shakti, if she has created all the human beings, all of them should have seeking. Because in freedom they have lost their way. They are seeking something else and they think they are right. They have a right to think that they are right. Even a stupid fellow, even a mad person thinks he is right. If you tell him that you are mad, he will say, you are mad. And this seeking, though put into them, they are not yet capable, so many of them are achieving it in the proper way. Because for that one has to surrender, not one's freedom, not one's intelligence, but the ego that has developed in human beings. With this ego, even I have seen people who are possessed, they want to keep the ego intact and through the ego they want to use the positions. Can you imagine? There are positions of negative forces. Such people want to keep that intact so that they can use it for their own purpose. They don't hate it, they don't want to get rid of it, but they want to keep it just because they can use these positions for their use. So the category of seeking is much less there. But there are many who are nowhere near seeking, who are really what we call them the evil people. And they never want, never, never would want that this world should change. Our media is dominated by these evil people. They don't want the world to change. They don't want to show anything that is good. They don't want to see the point what is going to help, what is benevolent for human beings. So on one side we see such collective <coughs> such collective negativity. Another side we find seekers who are real seekers, there are some who we can call as half-baked and some are pseudo-seekers. If they, and the, in the name of seeking, if they have done, uh, we can say, some sort of, of a sacrifice, for them they are very great. Also they get involved with people who are claiming, because I have never claimed anything, they are not impressed by Me. I have not changed My dress, I live like a housewife, so they are not impressed by Me. I have not developed two horns to show something great about Myself, so they won't be impressed. But on the other side if you see, this is Maya, this is Mahamaya where Adi Shakti, you see, does everything like human beings do, everything. You won't be able to find out that she's divine. My family people could not find out till I started this work, none of them, except for my father and mother. Nobody could find out that I had any powers. Such insensitivity to divine can be created by Mahamaya power of Adishat which is very important. 
Otherwise you cannot judge, you cannot understand. Despite that I am many times misjudged people because they know how to camouflage for a little while, but then I discover. If the seeking is ardent and they are seeking really the truth, they will find it, they will find it, no doubt. Because the whole creation is for them, the whole universe is for them, all deities are for them, all angels are for them, they are all looking out for them. This is important that we have so many Sahaja Yogis. Nobody had so many Sahaja Yogis in their lifetime because we have to have channels, I have to have channels and these channels have to be very clean, have to be beautiful, innocent and benevolent. If only they surrender to this fact that we are here for, as the instrument of God Almighty and that we have to give benevolence to others. I tell you, at least seventy percent of work is done. But even if they have got Realization, like an egg comes out of the shell, some of the birds still carry the part of the egg and some of them are not even grown up to be birds. Now we have to judge ourselves, we have to understand ourselves. Another thing, you know that I am a very mild person, very mild. People think I am very forgiving. I know everyone, not that I don't know, but I allow, all right? Go ahead, as far as you can go. Experience is the only way a human being can understand, no doubt. If you tell him something, he will never understand. Experience of Self-realization has made you understand. But again, I would say that we cannot give Realization to the whole world, we cannot. They are like stones absolutely horrible people. Whatever is happening is that those who are false are getting exposed and everybody is noticing that, that they are getting exposed. This exposure, of course, will save them from these horrible people, but I don't know if they would come to Sahaja Yoga or if they would take their Realization. This I am telling you because now I too have experience of human beings and all these years I have been working, I have seen that there are people and people and people. Out of them the seekers are extremely uh, proud of their seeking. So some of them don't want to give up their seeking, it's, a, it's kind of a job and call it a hobby, we are seekers. Now they have a certificate of being a seeker, you, they'll wear funny dresses, wear, have funny houses, funny hair, everything, recluses, they could be aggressive, anything, we are seekers. They take a certificate upon themselves, we are seekers. This is another quality of seekers also. They, for them it's a kind of their lifestyle, we are seekers and uh, wherever they have to go, they will go for seeking, they will go to ten places or twenty places. Every time they have argued with me that, Mother, there must be some more ways of it. Yes, maybe, I don't know of any, you can go. <laughs> now, the main job of Adi Shakti today is to give Realization to people, that's my main job. All the rest is looked after, is already 
uh, managed, I should say, is like a computer. I don't have to worry. It's a reflex action. Whatever is happening is in a reflex action. I don't have to worry about these things. Whether, uh, like people might say that, uh, Mother, I prayed to you uh, and uh, how is it you helped me so much? It's all reflex action. At that time maybe that thought may come to me, thought. But it's reflex action. I really don't do anything. Actually, I am Nishriya, not doing anything whatsoever. The laziest person you could think of me. <laughs> really, because if there is a complete organization working for me, why should I uh, work? Nothing necessary. But one thing is there, I am witnessing. And when I am witnessing, that acts on the reflex. That works out, the Param Chaitanya. Because if that is the power of the Adi Shakti, then whatever I witness gets uh, reported to that power. Is the other way now, like see, upon we have electricity power somewhere. So something goes wrong here, it is not reflected to that power, it is not. Something goes wrong, it finishes off here and here. But the other way now, that if I witness something wrong, I don't have to do anything, I'm just witness, I'm just watching. The whole thing acts through this tremendous power of Paramachaitanya. Now this power you do not know. You know Kundalini, you know all about chakras, this, that. But this power of Paramachaitanya is in every particle, into every atom. And <clears throat> it acts in such a manner that it directs, it pushes you, it takes you to the path of benevolence. Sometimes people say, Mother, I wanted, you see, to buy this shop, I couldn't get it and all that. It is for your benevolence you didn't get, thank God. After ten days they'll come and tell, thank God I didn't get that. So gradually through experience you start understanding that we don't have to worry. If you are lost on the way, normally people get very upset, but such yogis don't. Oh, very nice, must be something here that God has brought us here. This action slightly then changes. I would say the person who is overacting start thinking now, surrender, Islam, surrender. Give this problem to this Paramchaita. And it works. Such tremendous things have happened in this world just by bandhans, that it is unbelievable how these things are happening. Even supposing you find there are so many murders, this thing has happened, that has happened. This is also just to express the presence of Param Chaitanya, it's Kruta, it's uh, working out. The way it works, Kruta means the one which is done. Then you start realizing that this power you can achieve through your Kundalini. So when your Kundalini rises, that is also a reflection of Adi Shakti. Like we can say, we see one part of moon, the another part we don't see. 
In the same way, this power, when rises within you and touches this Paramachaitan, then you become empowered by that. That's how you are Sajogis. But you are not God. The incarnations can say, I am God. You are not incarnations. But none of the incarnations have ever said that they are Adishakti. They cannot. This power of Adi Shakti, which we call the Param Chaitanya, is the power that loves you, has complete control of the nature. It understands, it thinks, it knows everything. Everything about you, it knows. It works in every angle, in every walk of your life. It is with you entirely, as if, supposing you fall into a river which is flowing fast and you cannot swim anymore, you cannot use your hands anymore, you start flowing with it and then you realize that flowing with it is a better thing than to try to get out of it. But just flowing with it, just enjoy all the nature around you. You don't get drowned. On the contrary, you feel you are elevated and you are flowing with it. Then you understand, what am I to do about something when it's done by Param Chaitanya for me? But credit should be given to your Kundalini, which has worked it out, has put you onto that shore, has put you onto that beautiful, heavenly uh, kingdom of God. Thus, you understand there are two things that have happened, that first your Mother, your Kundalini which is within you, which is your own Mother, which has been with you throughout, has given you this birth. And then, it has taken to that power. Which power? You can use yourself. You are empowered by that. You'll be amazed how this power helps. I mean, you see, I'm, I shouldn't say that you can have all the powers, I shouldn't say that. But today, you see, they were complaining about somebody, immediately I told the name of the person. Now you'll say, how I knew. But I just know. That's all I can say. I just know. Supposing you are dealing with carpets, all right, so you know what pattern is this, what pattern is that, from where it has come, everything, you know. Isn't it? If you are there, you know everything. If this power is everywhere, one has to know everything. The connection is such, if you want to know, you can know anything. So they have called also Buddha as Sarva Lokiteshwara, that he sees all the lokas. How does he see Sarva Lokiteshwara? Because his ego, what we call, is the parama ego, you can call it, Mahat, Ahankara, knows everything, while your ego doesn't know anything. Because it doesn't know anything, you are enveloped by it. If he had known, if the ego had known what is the truth, you will be free person, absolutely free. But you don't want to surrender your ego. You don't want to allow yourself to flow into the river as Tao, oh, he said. No, you don't want to enjoy. You want to have your own 
speciality. Individuality is very different from having a kind of an ego within yourself that I am this, I am that. So this differentiation must start. After realization, in the light of realization, you should start seeing things. Now the first and foremost thing is to tell your ego to sit down, keep quiet, you don't know anything. And also in the modern times, it's a big fashion, you ask somebody, I don't know. You ask somebody, what's your name? I don't know. He doesn't even know his name. And to be stupid is a fashion. To show that you are very stupid, they think they are showing they are very innocent, is not a stupidity. The stupidity, I don't know which animal has, still I don't know what is the source of it. Still I'll have to find out who is the animal which has generated the stupidity in the... But I know one thing, it is our ego. Ego makes a person absolutely stupid. In Marathi, you see, thank God, the language is so rich, that anybody who starts showing off his ego, they say he's climbing on a bush. It's a little bush and he's climbing on that. All this ego comes through your own so-called ideas, achievements. But what are these achievements? You don't know anything. And this is what today I have to tell you, that if anything is working out today is your surrender of your ego. If you know how to surrender your ego, you'll work it out. Another thing which surprises me sometimes, in the West especially, that the, I think the women are the power, the Shakti. But in the West I find women are not using Adi Shakti, no? Firstly, they are still very much possessed by their emotions and uh, by their ideas and things like that. One side is man who is with the ego. But even women are very egoistical, very much. It's very difficult. For example, you marry some girl, Western girl, to somebody, she'll be very happy, jumping, taking all the presents, congratulations, wearing all dress, everything. After ten days she'll come and say, Mother, I'm confused. Confused? How? I'm now confused. You are confused now or before? I'm now confused, all right. You return all your ornaments, everything. No, no, then let me think. This is not the level of a Sajogini. Sajogini is the Shakti. And she has to take up challenges. I'll show you. I'll do it better. On the contrary, I find them extremely dominating. I'm amazed. Why should Shakti dominate? If she is Shakti, she will not dominate. Those who are not will dominate. Like, you see, you go in India to any collector's house, the collector would be humble, but the constable would be dominating. In the same way, I find this domination business is very common. And also a kind of a temperament of like a nun. They'll dress up like a nun, behave like a nun, uh, they won't smile. What is? Are you Sajoginis? Or what are you? Are you nuns? Then better join nunnery. Why I'm telling you, we're talking about Adi Shakti. So I'm talking about Shakti. 
how the Shakti has to come up. I was surprised that women were not spreading Sahaja Yoga. So somebody told me that leaders don't want women to spread Sahaja Yoga. I said, wrong. If the leader says that, it's not proper. But first of all, the Sahaja Yoginis have to be real Sahaja Yoginis. Because so far I've seen anybody, yes, you try to give any lady, try to give her the position of a leader, she just finishes off the people. Not all, but some. Now the duty of a Sahaja Yogini is to develop herself through meditation, through understanding oneself and through self-esteem that I am a Sahaja Yogini. I am the one who is Shakti. I am the potential of that. I am the potential myself. What do I do? Nothing. I didn't direct this, I didn't put this on, nothing of the kind. I'm nicely sitting here talking. But potential I am. Am I the potential? This is what the Sahaja Yoginis have to decide. Otherwise they are possessed, they are daydreaming, thinking no end of themselves. It's very difficult. I want some nice Sahaja Yoginis to be the leaders, I really want. But as soon as they become leader, they are on a horse, running so fast, so humble down yourself, unless and until there's a big space in the picture, what water can flow into it? Have a very large heart. Anybody comes to your house, you don't like it. Don't want to do anything for other surgeries, looking after them. It is really again and again I say in the West that women have to take up Shakti into themselves. And Shakti doesn't mean dominate your husband and make a fool out of him, no. It means give him powers. You are the supplier power of the whole family. And this is our family. All this is my family, I'm so concerned about everyone. Even the little thing I'm bothered about. I'm never satisfied that I've done my job now and I can now, tonight I'll go and off to sleep, I'll not think of anyone. Never. Concern about this and concern about that. All the time it's flowing, this power. And my concern is powerful. That works. Because my concern is genuine. I'm not concerned about myself, never. You'll be amazed when I see all these women doing all kinds of things to preserve themselves, I'm surprised. What is needed is the concern. And once you develop that concern, a genuine, loving, compassionate concern about others, even about children, I've seen that they never look after each other's children, they never help others. Somebody had to go for taking out the tooth, she had to carry the child with them. I mean, this is true. If you do not have concern, then you will not have collective mind, you will not have the collective power. And it's important that you all should try to be very collective, look after each other's now, I shouldn't say this, I was going to tell two Kabela ladies that this Kabela is an ashram and those people who come from other ashrams, even from Australia, are surprised that they are all living here just like a hotel, they are paying for it. We all pay, but we have gardens, we look after the gardens, we look after the outside. Here nobody is bothered, they are using everything, not bothered. Surprisingly, why when I am living here, they are like this? You go to any place in Australia, you go to America, anywhere, wherever there is an ashram, they all work on Sundays. They look. Here I have not seen, they all disappear. This is your ashram. 
you are staying here. And is now, today I have to tell this, because I feel that Sahaja Yoga is missing out itself on their shaktis. Some of them do not know how to smile even, and some of them are extremely dominant. I have to tell you this, because you are so important, but for me no man would have done this job, no man in Incarnation would have done this job. Nice, they get crucified at a young age, very nice, get crucified at such a young age. Then another one takes to poison, another one is killed by somebody. It's like that, they all died very young. Nobody wanted to do this work, nobody was... I mean, they got fed up, they got fed up. We had Ganeshwara who went into Samadhi at the age of twenty-three years, can you imagine? He must have been fed up with the people. Now, it is for you people, the ladies, have to develop that patience of your mother, that affection, that love, and then you will see how your Shakti will work out. I again and again always have talked about this, and at Adi Shakti point I have to say, you are in your family like a Shakti, and you have to be wise, you have to be sensible, you have to understand your husband, you have to understand your children, you have to have patience. On the contrary, they spoil their children. That is to be understood that you must know first what is good for their benevolence. Today, for example, if I say the children, if they go to a school, they should not be removed. It is for their benevolence. What are the people going to gain out of it? So somebody says, no, all right, get out. What can you do? Such attachment to your own children shows you are a powerless person. You must love all the children, you must look after all the children, you must enjoy all the children, take interest in but what I find, that they are only interested in their own children. We are a joint family, we should say. We all live together, we have to share everything. It is something I can't understand. Say, in India, say, if you see five, six children, all the girls will run after. All the women will look after them. I mean, it's such a pleasure to them to see any children, just they look after them. But this kind of insensitivity to your collective behavior is going to also spoil your children. So what you are going to transmit to the whole world is this Sahaj living. And the women make the society. If Indian society is good, the credit goes to the Indian women and to their wisdom. Our men are stupid in India. They have spoiled politics, economics, everything. But society is still maintained. And they are very, very still say on the right path. This only comes because of the wisdom of the women. If the women are busy dressing up for hours together, thinking about their clothes, what they are going to wear, finished. This is a day of worshipping the Kundalini, who is the Mother. She is the Mother and you are the Mother. You must know each and everything about your child. Somebody comes and tells me, my child is now a drug addict. How can it be possible? In India, children don't get drug addicts because all the time the mother is on their head like a hawk. She knows where he goes, what he does. She loves, but she knows where he goes. I mean, even when we were in college, even when I'm married, if I went home, my mother would ask, where did you go? We dare not say anything. Come back by six, even when we are married. <laughs> and we are supposed to tell her. 
That was the mother's work. The child, where he goes, what does he do? And then to say, children, don't listen to you. Because why the children don't listen? Because you do not discipline them. Here the atmosphere is very bad, I greet. The children are very bad, I greet. Everything is there, I greet. But if you are a strong mother in your love, your children will not go. See, even now as you know that all the time they are, all these leaders are hovering around me. What is there? I have no honey with me or anything. But they are just sitting there, just sitting next to me, all the leaders. But this is after Realization. But even my, all my nephews, you see, they would all come and sit next to me, all my in, uh, daughter-in-laws, they will all sit next to me. They would not leave me. And people used to ask them, what's wrong, what's wrong with you? You are all the time sticking out to your aunt, what is it? The concern. And they understand that it is for their benevolence you are telling them. But yourself should be all right. As a mother, one has to be tolerant, one has to understand. But when you have to tell them, you have to tell them. If you think, you can tell them sharply or maybe in a proper way. But the child should know that you love the child and that you love all the children. It is very subtle. Like I have seen, once I took a child uh, of one Sajogi with me to the market, and he was asking, I'll buy this, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, everything he wanted to buy. So I was wondering what's wrong with this boy. But say, if I take my own grandchildren, they won't buy nothing. Even if you want to buy two pairs of shoes, no, 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 one is sufficient. If this will be spoiled, they will never ask for anything. It's a kind of a self-esteem. They don't want it. Same with the wives. Wives never ask for anything from them. No, nothing. Nothing. The husband will go on asking, please ask for something, ask for something. No, we don't want it. That is going to be a Sajogini mother and a wife and the Shakti. She has no demands. Nothing she's asking for. The one who is a giver, what is she going to ask? The one who is a supplier, what is she going to ask? So I feel sometimes that the left side or the women's side in Sahaja Yoga is a little bit going down. And they have to come up. First, meditation, respect of Mother, teaching the children how to work out Sahaja Yoga, talking to them about Sahaja Yoga and not only about food, of cleanliness, of being nice to others, how to share things. And telling children uh, about good stories that you have heard about, telling them what is dharma is, talking to them, having a rapport. This is what you have to understand to make Sahaja Yoga very strong. You are the Shakti of Sahaja Yoga, take it from Me. And you have to work it out that way. Instead of worrying about small, small things. Sometimes I receive letters from the ladies, it's something really it pains Me. Can't understand how they are Sahaja Yogis. Our uh, whole system of Sahaja has to be a model system that others should see and understand that what we have achieved in our day-to-day -day life. Adi Shakti works in day-to-day -day life, the smallest things to the highest. And all the time you have to learn, all the time you have to learn, whether you are a leader or not a leader, all the time you must 
know what you have to know. I have not known this, I have not known that. Unless and until you develop that kind of an attitude that I have to learn, that hum humble attitude, that humility, I have to learn, I have to learn, still I have to learn, this ego will never come. Because of this ego you are satisfied with yourself, that's the sign of a ego. You don't know how much you are torturing others, what you are destroying, nothing, but you feel extremely happy with yourself. Such a happy-go-lucky personality sometimes is living on air. What I have done today for somebody else, how have I talked to somebody else, what have I given to somebody else? I need not give you presents, there's nothing. Why should I give you presents? But I give you presents because of my own satisfaction. And if I take presents from you, it is for your own satisfaction. So, what we have to do in what we find satisfaction? What do you find satisfaction in? Just think about it. What do we find satisfaction in? My house should be all right, my husband should be all right, my children should be all right, my, my, my. Unless and until this my shifts to another person, you are still in the realm of maya. You have to learn this. is to think every day or write, all of you should write diaries, what have I done for others? What have I said to others? What will make or please another person? Small, small things can make the life so beautiful. And also very big things, there are for you. If do not think, if you do not think you are very big, all these big things are also for you. It's like this, this whole sky can be covered by one leaf if you see the leaf against the sky, the leaf shows its existence. In the same way, this whole vision of Sajoka can be completely covered by one person who stands with this great expanse, one person here and one person there. It's so remarkable, with such a lot of Sajoka, there are people who are here, there and there, so remarkable that if you take their names also, I just feel I'm drenched into the ocean of joy. Only one person. Then what about you? Why can't we do that? When Adi Shakti is with you, reflected when all her powers are with you, how much we can do? In this expanse of my vision, I want to have more and more people who will be of some visions themselves but not small people who just think of their children, think of food. No, no, they are not wanted, useless. They will all drop out. I hope you have understood where you are, what do you have. What is created within you is this Kundalini, 
which has given you all the knowledge, everything. But there are so many I know, they don't even know what is this chakra, they don't know. I mean, going to that limit of ignorance. You have to know all these things. You have to understand what is this. Because this is for you, all for you, all this knowledge. And the greatest of all is the faith, not a faith which is blind, but enlightened faith that you are now one with that Divine Power. This should really settle you completely. This is, I think, is one of the most important pujas. Because so far, uh, Guru Pujas have been there, so many people were worshipped as Guru Puja. Or maybe my birthday as you think it to be, or so right. But I think to understand your own powers of Kundalini and your powers that are available to you through the working of Param Chaitanya is very important. That will give you confidence, that will give you compassion, that will give you a vision and that will make you a very great personality, very great personality. What was George Washington? They said he was great. Oh, what was Abraham Lincoln? He was great. But you are all having your Self-realization. You have to think of the whole universe, the whole expanse. Unless and until that brain develops in you, I'm sure, very sure, that the progress of Sahaja Yoga within and without will be less. So understand, these powers are with you. You have to utilize them with humility. May God bless you.
Sing the Mam Shri Gadaraj Dayale, Hindi Psalms 49, page 180. And uh, everyone can offer flowers. <laughs>
Flowers to be offered, please. Thank you. Thank you. Page two hundred forty five in the language. Thank you. 
Thank you.
In the one hundred and twelve, page two hundred and sixty three, I sing the text
Time for the asking. Can you ask for the charging if you are going tomorrow or it has been yesterday at the fair, giving the libation? Come forward for the asking.
Chandula Maskar and Rosemary Mahi.